Good morning, everyone. Welcome to episode 20 of the D Heart House podcast. My name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from Big Spring, Texas, in my craft room in the D Heart House. <laughs> Uh, today is Friday, October 27th. It has been three weeks since the last episode, since my last yarn confession, which is a really long time. Sorry for that. Uh, yeah, so it's very sunny outside. <laughs> And the sun is coming through the clouds and the trees. So sometimes it's dark and then, you know, the sun comes out through the trees and the clouds and then it's very bright all of a sudden. So I'm sorry in advance for that. Okay. Yeah, so it's Friday, October 27th. Halloween is coming up really soon, you guys, so I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you can find me on social media. You can find me on Ravelry, on Instagram, on Etsy. Of course, I have the Etsy shop, and all that information will be scrolling uh, down here at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> So, yeah, please, uh, you know, comment below and uh, subscribe and give this episode a thumbs up and, yeah, come back, come back over and over again uh, because I'm going to, well, I'm planning on going back to recording every week because, uh, yeah, this two-week thing and then something comes up like I get sick. Uh, and then it turns into a three-week thing, and then I have this mega episode to upload. And I would rather see you guys more often and give you shorter episodes, so that's my plan. Uh, unless you guys like the mega episodes, I mean, what do you prefer? Do you prefer watching shorter episodes more often, or do you like waiting a while and seeing lots of things all at once? I mean what's better, you know? I don't know. I kind of like the shorter ones, but that's just me. What do you guys like? So, yeah. You guys like my decorations? Okay, this lit up skull here I have in the window of my craft room facing the towards the front of the house, and I just, I think it's so cute. So I moved it so it could be in the background in the episode. I think it's pretty nice. Uh, and then I have my bags back here, which I'll talk about right now. How about we do um, shop update first, huh? So let me just grab uh, the new bags. Okay, so uh, the new bags are now uh, Thanksgiving themed since, you know, Halloween is almost here. Uh, so the Thanksgiving themed bags, I started off with making um, the large sweater size bags this time, and then I'm gonna work my way down. So uh, this week, today, I'm going to put in the shop, so today, Friday, October 27th, uh, up in the shop, I don't know what time, just whenever I finish taking pictures and posting everything, then they'll be up in the shop. Uh, so they should be up in the shop right now if you're watching this episode. So I love these bags, you guys, because I've added a new feature to them, which I think I talked about before, but I kind of changed the plan a little bit and I love it so much more. So let me share that with you. Okay. So this fabric is amazing, first of all. I love that it's such, it's such a big print, which makes it so great for the sweater bag. Because like on the back, it's, you know, it's not even like repeated. It's so, oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, so we've got the um, Thanksgiving print and I paired it with a nice plaid, okay. 
And then on the inside, okay, I just went with a solid cream for this one, which goes with the, the cream and the plaid down here. And what I've added to my sweater size bags now, which is something I'm gonna make pretty standard, is a pocket, okay? And it's clear. Yeah, so I'm using that clear uh, vinyl, right, to add in a pocket. And I love it. I think it's the coolest. So let me just pop this out for you. Maybe you can see. Right. Oh, I think it's the coolest. It's the coolest. So um, you could put your yarn balls in the pocket and, uh, you know, have your project out in the, the not pocket part, or you could... Uh, just put your notions in the pocket, your your cell phone, your scissors, whatever. Um, I did make the pocket rather large. Uh, so, you know, now I gotta look at it. I know definitely a big smartphone will fit in the pocket. Uh, you know, honestly, a small tablet would fit in that pocket too. So. For those of you who knit from electronics, uh, I prefer to print my patterns. Um, so definitely you could, you know, put your piece of paper in there for the pattern. Uh, but some people prefer to just use the digital copies and just go from their tablet or phone. So yeah, those will fit in there. Oh, I love it. And of course there's the handle and there's an extra tab on here so you can clip on keys or whatever and then you know it's a zipper closure and then on the inside I still have the little tab with the the d-ring so you can clip things on here uh, I've actually been using this to clip on my uh, progress keepers uh, on here so if I start a pair of socks I know I'm going to need at least one progress keeper so I go ahead and clip that in the bag uh, and then when I'm ready to use it I can just clip it on my project so anyway yeah I think that's pretty cool so I've got um, the Thanksgiving print with the light plaid the cream based one and then I also have the Thanksgiving print with a darker plaid that's more like the rusty uh, oranges and browns and yeah I think oh my god I just love these yeah yeah so for the interior on this one I have a uh, gray with white polka dots to go with all of this and again the pocket which is clear yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty swell. So I'm going to be taking pictures of these later today and uh, posting them in my Etsy shop, which is D Heart House Creations on Etsy. So uh, sweater size bags are going up first, and then um, this week I want to make the sock size ones, uh, and then. If I have time, if not, then the next week I'll make the um, Notion size bags. So I love it. I love it. So uh, the sweater size bags um, now include a pocket. So, um, you know, the price will go up a little bit because I had to use a, a few more materials and it takes a little bit more time to make sure the pocket is straight, which is annoying, but totally worth it, you guys. So. Um, thank you, uh, Franny from Knit Night for suggesting a pocket in the sweater size bag. I think that was a really great idea. So, um, I played around with different styles of pockets and I really like the clear one the best. Um, it's so easy to find your notions in there with the pocket being clear. So, yay! So, uh, yeah, check out my shop if you haven't already. Uh, 
I'm happy to do um, custom orders if you have any requests of, you know, um, this size bag in this fabric or maybe a fabric that I haven't featured yet, um, but you have something in mind like, you know, colors or animals or something, um, I go <laughs> shopping pretty frequently so I can keep my eyes peeled for um, a particular design you have in mind or color scheme or or something like that. I know Christmas is coming up and so I'm happy to do some kind of custom order if you're wanting to you know gift a bag to someone. Um, I, I would love to help you with a project like that so uh, yeah. So thanks guys. <laughs> Yeah, so um, next I want to talk about, um, well, first I should say, before I get too far into the podcast, what I'm wearing. <laughs> so I'm wearing a shawl that I knit earlier this year. It's called Drea's Shawl, and it's a DK weight shawl. Yeah, DK weight shawl. I knit this out of just what's it called? Baby Bee yarn, which is acrylic and polyamide from Hobby Lobby. It's super soft. I've washed this. It's still in really good condition and I love wearing it. It's just a basic triangle shawl and it's a free pattern on Ravelry, Drea's shawl. I believe it's by Craig Rosenfeld. Um, I'll have the name below. Uh, here on the screen. So yeah, it's starting to cool off and it's amazing. Except I say it's starting to cool off. Okay, let me show you guys the weather. Okay, this is the second time this has happened to me. Um, okay, so I'm coming to you from West Texas and West Texas is not known for being cold. So when... <laughs> When I see this as a weather forecast, I immediately go, which knit am I going to wear today? <laughs> okay, it's 47 outside right now, degrees Fahrenheit, a high of 57 and a low of 32. That's funny because like five minutes ago it said low of 31. But uh, yeah, we're under a freeze watch for this evening and... I think that's pretty great. Oh my god, they put a ghost down here for Halloween. Isn't that funny? <laughs> okay. Yes, so you can see the light coming in through the blinds as it dots on my face. Not cool, son. Anyway, uh, yeah, so <laughs> what I've noticed, okay, this season, this fall so far here in Big Spring is it's, we get like cold for a couple days and then it's in the 80s again and then cold for a couple days and then it's in the 80s again. So I don't know what's going on. I know it'll get cold eventually, so I'm not going to complain too much. But yeah, today I'm going to wear some hand knits. I'm going to go outside and enjoy the cool fall weather and keep drinking warm drinks and just enjoy today. So I also want to share with you my new coffee mug. Uh, this was a gift from Mary, who is Michael's mom. Uh, yeah. Yep, she's got me pegged. Pretty much. Yep. So this is my new favorite coffee mug, you guys. Yep, and this is starting to get cold, so I'm going to chug it. So, that was pretty awesome. Okay, back to the podcast. <laughs> so, I want to announce a knit-along that I want to host for the month of November. So, I have released a pattern, uh, which I previously announced, the Kanak Socks Pattern. And I would like to do a knit along for the Canuck socks in the month of November. So, uh, 
yeah, basically just, I mean, it's a free pattern. Use any yarn you want and um, knit a pair of Canuck socks. And uh, basically knit the pair and post a, a picture and be entered into a giveaway. So yeah, so it'll start November 1st and end uh, December 1st. So, excuse me. Uh, so you'll have the whole month of November to uh, work on the socks. And I won't close a thread until the evening on December 1st or probably early on December 2nd uh, to give you time to, you know, post pictures of your, your finished socks. So, uh, and yeah, I'm going to say whips count. So if you've already started a pair of Canuck socks and you want to enter, that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, yeah, so the pattern is free and you can use any yarn that you want. So um, stash dive by all means, uh, and enter into the knit along to be entered into a giveaway for a prize. So what I'll do is I'll have a finished objects thread where you can post your finished Canuck socks. And so that thread will be reserved just for posting um, the picture of your finished socks. And I'll also have a chatter thread where you guys can chatter away and give each other encouragement and uh, ask questions and whatever. Uh, so the prize is going to be uh, one of my bags. So since it's a sock knit along, it will be a sock size bag giveaway. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's see. Yeah, let's do it this way. Um, at the end of the knit along, um, whoever wins, which will be a random drawing based on those who finish socks, and that person will get to go into the shop and pick the design of their choice in a sock size bag and then I'll ship that out to them as the prize. Okay, so I won't pick the design for you. I'll let you pick um, the design you like and just that it has to be a sock size bag. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, that's that's it for that. I'm just noticing the lighting is kind of, well, it's different than when we started. <laughs> okay, so yes, the knit along, uh, so the threads will open up on, uh, well, I'll probably get them posted, but have them locked for now. Uh, the finished objects thread and the chatter thread. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's that. So ask questions if you have them. Um, I'm a Liddy Knits 2 on Ravelry. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, host and knit along. I hope uh, I hope everyone can participate, and I'm excited to give a bag away. So yeah. Okay. So that covers announcements. So shop update, knit along. Cool. All right. So it has been three weeks, which is crazy. And let's see what has happened between then and now. Well, I think midterms happened, right? And knitting, sewing. And uh, we went to San Antonio this past weekend. We left on very early on Friday morning, and I usually record on Fridays. And I couldn't because we were driving to San Antonio. 
and so I wanted to record on Thursday before we left, but that didn't happen because we were packing on Thursday so that we could leave very early on Friday morning. So, yeah, here we are. And I'm just, I'm too busy during the week um, with work to do much crafting, let alone record a podcast, so it's pretty much got to be on the weekend when we do this. And last weekend we were really busy, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we went to San Antonio. We went to, uh, well, Michael had a meeting to attend on Friday, which was the whole reason for the trip initially. And then we decided we'd just stay down there for the whole weekend and visit with family. So Michael, Mary, and myself all packed up in the car with the dogs, so our dog Marjorie and Mary's dog Darby, and which you saw on uh, episode 19. So we all uh, went down to San Antonio and visited with family. We uh, went to a corn maze, which was really fun. Uh, the kids got to go down slides and bounce on inflatable bouncy things and we went through the corn maze and it was it was a blast it was it was really warm it could have been a little cooler but it was in the high 80s uh, and there's not really a lot of shade in a corn maze so yeah it could have been a little cooler but it was fun nonetheless so we did that and then Michael, Mary, and myself all came down with this sinus sickness, and I don't know where we got it. I don't know if it's like a uh, sinus infection because of being around so much pollen and dust and whatever floating around in the corn maze, or, or what, but uh you know, it wasn't too bad. We didn't have fevers. It's just, it's just all right here and our throats hurt. So, I don't know. <sighs> but, I mean, you can still, you can hear that I still kind of have it a little bit, but it's, it's on the way out and I'm ready to get back to normal. <laughs> Yeah, so we went to San Antonio, and um, we've been there several times, and this was the first time that I went to a yarn a yarn store in San Antonio, like a local yarn store, and it was awesome. So I went to Yarnivore, and it wasn't just me, Michael and Mary and a couple of the kids came with us, and... Of course, I spent at least an hour in there, even though it felt like 10 minutes, because I have to look at everything in the store before I can decide on buying anything. And so while we were there, uh, that's where Mary picked out the mug for me, which was great. And I didn't even notice she was buying it because I was obsessed with all the yarn. Uh, but I settled on a couple of solids. Because I have lots of variegated yarn and self-striping yarn, and I don't really have many solids to work with, and I would like more of them. So I went kind of simple. I really wanted to get like some, you know, Texas dyed yarn, but they didn't really have as much of a selection as I was hoping for, I guess. They just, I don't know, they, they had stuff, don't get me wrong. It just, nothing was like, you have to buy me. So I didn't. So I just picked up a couple of solids. I got this really nice uh, emerald green and this like grayish cream color. So if I block the light, it might come out better. Okay. Anyway, it's just Cascade 
Cascade Heritage. Um, yarn. So, I think it's kind of funny. These have two different labels, even though they're the same kind of yarn. But, uh, yeah, so I want to do some kind of color work with this. Just a really nice, rich green and this grayish cream. So, anyway, pretty basic. But, I mean, I love this shawl, and it's just purple and white. So, yeah, I'm excited. Oh, and I don't need that much more yarn. I mean, I'm pretty set. In fact, all of this down here, <laughs> I picked up the weekend before Joann's. It's that Bernat super bulky, like, blanket yarn, and I'm totally going to make this huge, chunky, cabled blanket. But I kind of need to finish, like, these other blankets I have going first before I start that. So that's just going to hang out for now. Uh, anyway, too much stuff to talk about, I'm telling you. So did I finish anything in these last three weeks? Of course not. Why would I do that when I could cast on new things? and pick up old projects I haven't worked on in a while. Duh. Okay. So I have a couple things that are really close to being finished, but not actually finished. So maybe next time I'll have them finished. I don't know. So finished objects, nada, nothing, whatever. So my works in progress I'll start with one that's really close to being finished, and that's living in my Star Wars bag, D Hard House Creations bag, and now the sun is behind the clouds. This is so funny. Is that too bright? Is that good? Is that good lighting? Yeah, maybe I'll just leave it alone. Okay? Alright, so living in this bag are uh, socks for Michael. And I did finish one of them, so I guess I have a half object. So these are, of course there's like a sticker stuck to it. One of those pricky things from the weeds. Uh, yeah, so they're shorty socks. Uh, he wants more shorty socks. Now I'll put this on the blocker. Uh, this is... So I started out knitting these two at a time. And then, because for some reason I was like, I really want to knit socks two at a time. Even though I really don't like it. I don't know what I was thinking. But yeah, they started out two at a time. And then I stopped doing that. And started knitting them just side by side, but on different needles. So I did finish one, and the second one I'm on the toe decreases. So it's really close. Uh, and I was knitting on these last night when we were watching uh, Wonder Woman here at the house, and I just I fell asleep during the movie, so I'm lame. But yeah, I'm going to maybe finish these today, and I'll have another pair of socks. So yeah. Uh, these are knit, so the pattern, I knit them cuff down, so I start with a twisted German cast on, which is a nice stretchy long tail cast on, and I do 2 by 2 ribbing for 20 rounds, and then I did, um, then I just do the, it's just plain stockinette for the sock, and a fish lips kiss heel, and a standard toe. So, yeah. The yarn is Patton's Croy in the slate jacquard color. And I use size one, US size one needles, which is a 2.25 millimeter. 
I do 68 stitches for Michael socks and yeah I use the uh, so I started out with two at a time so I was magic looping them and then when I split them up I went with the two 16 inch circulars this is still my favorite way of knitting socks is with the two 16 inch circulars so yeah I think I just need to know that about myself and just go with it because I start out a different way and then I'm like let's switch let's switch my needles so I don't know it's like it's like I'm getting bored with it which is why I'm wanting to do like let's do two at a time and then I get part way through and go oh my god I hate this and then I switch back to my normal I don't quite get it but <sighs> anyway these are almost finished but I didn't work on them a lot over these last three weeks uh, I did put a lot of work into I'll show you this I put a lot of work into these socks that I was designing and these are for me and you can see I did this like sort of cabled stretchy ribbing kind of pattern on them and guess what they're too small I'm at the freaking toe I'm at the toe I was doing the toe decreases and so I switched onto the the magic loop to do the toe decreases I was knitting it on do I still have it in here yeah nine inch circular again why do I do this I don't <laughs> it was fine okay it, it was very enjoyable it would have been a lot better had I not done a pattern honestly if I do the nine inch circular I should just knit a stockinette sock I don't I don't know what I'm thinking I think I'm just bored and trying stuff and then I realize that was a bad idea but I don't know you got to be willing to try stuff right to figure out what you like and what you don't like and what works for you so I guess I'm just experimenting but yeah so I had this on the nine inch circulars I even did the heel with the nine inch circulars that was fine and then I got to the toe and you know you're actually decreasing down the number of stitches so then this doesn't work anymore so I put it on the the 40 inch cable uh, to do the toe decreases well okay so when it's on the nine inch circular it's I mean this is so small okay because you gotta like keep your stitches on there right I my foot doesn't fit through here okay so I have one of those and it's on the shelf cardboard tracing of my foot and I put the sock on there right to and so I know when to do the toe decreases well this is so small look even the cardboard foot won't fit through here all right so I was thinking well it's on the nine inch circulars I know that about it it's fine so then when I switch to the to the magic loop it's finally you know able to stretch out and everything so I put it on the cardboard foot and it was a really tight fit and I got kind of scared so then I tried it on my actual foot and the thing is too small so I have to I have to scrap it I have to take it out I have to take it out who has smaller feet than me the kids but then this you know a size 8 sock isn't gonna fit them when they're four years old, five years old, ten years old, like, anyway. So I have to rip this out. I have to rip this out and, okay, so I was knitting these on size zeros. Okay, so that's one thing, is I knit them on a smaller size needle. So that's already going to make my gauge smaller. 
Then I was knitting them in this pattern, which probably also made them a bit smaller. Okay, even though it's, it's a ribbing and it's stretchy, there are decreases in there. Cover up my face so it'll focus. Okay, which pulls the fabric in. So I either need to do size zeros with more stitches or do the same number of stitches but on size one. I think I might do zeros but add like four more stitches. Yeah. It was close. I could put it on but the f this fabric was so stretched out. Like definitely here at the heel. You know it was so stretched out to go over my foot. But it was also really stretched out over my foot, like over the top of my foot here. And I thought, no, number one, these socks aren't going to last very long because I'm like stretching the heck out of them. And number two, they're not going to feel very good when they're on that tight. So I'm so sad because put in so much time, all the car knitting, to San Antonio. Actually not all of it, half of it was on this sock, half of it was on something else. But you guys, I hate ripping stuff out, but I'm gonna rip it out and I'm gonna fix it. So whatever. And I'm gonna do it magic loop instead of, instead of the nine inch circular. Okay, okay, cool. Ugh. All right, so scrap that and start over. So that design isn't coming out anytime soon because, you know, I have to put in the, the notes, like add more stitches or something. Anyway, I gotta mess around with it, but it's a part of trying new things, right? as I guess is the theme, like trying new things, it's not always going to work out the first time. So, and I know that. I know that. Okay. So one pair of socks is almost finished and being successful. The other pair, not successful, got to rip out and start over. Not a big deal, Alicia. It was, it was a fun knit. I'm just going to add more stitches. That's all that's all okay so uh i had a a new cast on so i'll just go with that because it's already out uh this was my other car knitting so when we go on a road trip i feel like i always want to start a new project like it's new and exciting and we're going on a road trip and it's so fun so um so i took this in one of my new halloween bags so this is a d Hart house creations bag in the sock size and I just love the fabric okay so living in here uh, is it's, it's already out on the table because I was working on it this morning and of course I stopped in the middle of a row because I'm a genius so this is my uh, sorry I just got an email okay so yeah, so my new cast on, I cast this on on Friday, uh, last, so a week ago, and I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished with a shawl. Okay, well, I'm having to shorten the pattern a little bit because I'm afraid I'm going to run out of yarn. So, yeah. I'm supposed to do, like what, 16, 17, 18, 19, like 20 more rows, and I don't, I don't think this is going to make it 20 more rows. Yeah, so I'm going to have to shorten the pattern a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. So, yeah, so the yarn is Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering. This is in the Alberta Arts color. 
so it's blue and purple and I love it. it makes me think of water like all the variations in the water okay so the pattern is Raina Raina shawl by let me look at my notes Nora I don't know how to pronounce that last name so this is a free pattern on Ravelry I love free patterns <laughs> and it's all bunched up on the needles because it's crazy big now and of course I'm in the middle of a row but it's garter and lace very basic very easy uh, pattern to memorize and she even gives a like like boxes to check off to keep up with the pattern so you can see with the mesh I'm supposed to do like this whole extra row of boxes and I'm not gonna do those I'm just gonna finish off uh, this row here so I'm gonna do two more rows of the mesh and then I'm gonna skip to the garter and bind off because I don't think I have enough um, yarn to do that many more mesh rows and I've already messed up the lace part the mesh of course the first time I make a mistake is when I'm almost finished and in the lace part I don't I don't know how to fix it and the funny thing is is the row before I was thinking you know I haven't put in a lifeline I wonder if I should do that and then I mess up Uh, but I tried to pick it up the best I could and we'll see uh, once I finish this and you know block it out and everything we'll see how it looks like is it really obvious that I messed up right there or not but either way I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rip this back and do all of the mesh over again so I'm going with it but yeah, so I only have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six more rows to do. So, since I'm skipping all of those squares there. But, yeah, I mean, it's one page pattern. It's a one page pattern, and she's got these, you know, this row counter. So, it's wonderful. If you haven't tried it, try it. And she does say in the pattern, you know, if you're afraid of running out of yarn and you don't want to dip into another skein, like she makes suggestions on where to skip ahead. Um, so, and that's, uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. Yep, proceed to the next sef section after an even numbered row. Doing it. Thank you. So, yeah, it's, it's a really fun net, and I'm glad that this variegated yarn is uh, working out really well with this pattern. I tried this pattern previously, and <laughs> so this is knit on size, U.S. size 4 needles, which is a 3.5 millimeter, and it's funny is I tried knitting this pattern previously this year and I cast it on on size ones because I wasn't paying attention fingering weight yarn grab my size one needles and go crazy and yeah this first uh, garter triangle down here was tiny and I was like god this shawl's gonna be small and then I noticed the needle size was wrong so I had to rip it all out and then I didn't want to start over. I lost my mojo, so here we are later in the year and I'm doing it. Uh, yeah, so I'm knitting these on, like I said, US size four needles. These are my interchangeable needles. These are Knitter's Pride Melodies of Life interchangeable needles. They're very nice. They're very nice. They're not 
too pointy and they're not too dull. Uh, since I use the tip of my finger to push on the needle, I don't like it to be too pointy. But it's also not so dull that it, they're hard to work with. They're just, they're just right. Uh, and the join is very smooth. Uh, they do, when I'm working with them, they do come, they're a twist on. So they do come untwisted sometimes when I'm working with them. And, you know, I can feel the yarn catching on them and I just, I just twist it back in. It's not a big deal, so. Okay, so that's, I'm going to leave this out because I'm in the middle of the row and I need to finish that before I put it back in the bag. Before I drop more freaking lace stitches. Yeah. Okay, so I have like three more. Okay. So, uh, this shawl hasn't seen too much love since I showed you last time. So this is in, okay, Woolridge Designs bag. And I love the sheep on here. Woolridge Designs is on Etsy. And living in here is my meandering shawl, which I'm calling meandering malabrigo because I'm knitting it with malabrigo so I do have a stitch marker on here to show you uh, where I was last time so my campfires on there and yeah this is a brio shawl by Stephen West and so this side has the malabrigo and this side has dye is cast yarn. Ooh, I love it. I love it so much. So, so much. Yeah. Does that make it better? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I just love it. And the gray too, the dice cast yarn has speckles. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, this is a joy. But uh, I did not take this on a road trip because I did not want to brioche in the car. I did not want to mess this up. So this is an at home knitting only because I'm new to brioche and I don't want to mess it up. So, yeah, I know I have to focus. So, and I think I might have messed up here. It kind of looks like I did. I don't care. How do you take brioche back? Don't ask me, I'm new. But yeah, so this is uh, the Meandering Shawl by Stephen West. I'll just show you the picture. Yep. Very, very uh, nicely written pattern for someone who is new to brioche. So if you're thinking about brioche, this is a great pattern. Um, it is not free. It is a paid for pattern on uh, Ravelry. And again, I'm knitting this out of Malabrigo. And the color is, yep, Anniversario. And, and that's the dark variegated color. And then the gray with the speckles is dyes cast yarn and the color is rainbow storm anyway it's fun so i'm knitting this on my chow goo needles in a size what does the pattern call for i just followed the pattern but yeah size four 
size 4 needles, which is a 3.5 millimeter. And yeah, I I haven't touched this at all this week. So I'm looking forward to it. I think I'm going to finish the Reina first and then come back to this. And then I have sweater progress. So living in my sweater size bag, my Mario bag. This is another D Hart House Creations bag. Uh, and you can see it's very full. This bag is very full of a worsted weight sweater. Ugh. I hear doggies outside the door. So this is awesome because there are no needles in this thing. There are no needles and it's not attached to any skein of yarn because I finished the body. Now, I still have to do the sleeves, so it's not completely finished, but yeah, I finished the body. And you can see the Superman stitch marker is where I was last time I showed this to you three weeks ago. This is not for me, this is for Michael. Yes, so this is the flax pattern by Tin Can Knits. It is a free uh, pattern. And I have the papers here. Oh, wow. Yeah, really good, Alicia. Okay, so there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm knitting this in size large for Michael. It's a worsted weight sweater pattern. And it's for um, men or women or children. They have all the sizes. Yep. So now it's time to pick up uh, one of the sleeves and start knitting a sleeve. So yeah, I finished the body, what, like two weeks ago? No, a week ago, because I didn't touch this at all this past week either. And yeah. Um, the Reina has kind of been a palette cleansing knit so that I can come back to these big projects and, you know, they'll feel like new to me. But yeah, I'm really excited because the body, as you guys know, is a lot, it's so many stitches around. Um, I gotta clip those hanging things. I think there was a knot in the yarn and the little ends are hanging out so I gotta clip those but yeah so the sleeves will be easier you know because it's not as many stitches so it'll go faster and I'm really excited so yeah yep sweater progress I love it <laughs> All right, so the last work in progress I'm gonna share with you is actually a crochet project. So uh, I worked on this while I was sick, which is funny. I was like, I don't wanna knit, I wanna crochet. So this is something I started last year in December. And then at some point I started it over but it's a crochet blanket for Michael. It's, uh, well, I'll just show it to you. Got all these strings hanging. Cause it is color work with crochet. So some of you probably can already tell what this is. 
This is going to be a TARDIS blanket. So this is how much progress I made this past week. Yep. So I'm doing the, the actual TARDIS now and then when I finish the TARDIS I'll come back later and put on um, an edging. Uh, a nice big gray border around the whole thing to make it a little bit wider. So right now, I mean, it is like big enough to cover my body, but with not much extra room on the side. So I just decided instead of also having the gray ends hanging around, um, I'm just going to do the main TARDIS now and then do the edging later. So. Yeah, this is really fun. So the whole thing, um, so the pattern <laughs> calls for a single crochet, which is fine. It just takes longer to do and it makes a very dense fabric and I much prefer double crochet. So I'm doing the whole blanket in double crochet. So I am following a chart which is put away in a folder right now so I'm keeping this in a basket here at the house uh, instead of a bag I mean this project is crazy big um, and I don't have a blanket size bag so we're just gonna stick with the basket uh, okay so where was I I don't know Michael came home for lunch so the dogs went nuts <laughs> um, anyway so yeah, so the blanket lives in the basket because it's such a big project. Uh, and yeah, it just hangs out here in the craft room. And when I feel like crocheting, I just pick it up and crochet on it, which apparently isn't that often. So whatever. Uh, but yeah, it was nice to see this, this grow a little bit. So um, I definitely have a ways to go on this. <laughs> big projects big projects uh, yeah I haven't really put many squares on my mitered square blanket uh, I definitely need to do more of that <sighs> yeah the month is almost over I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that knit along I really wanted to put some squares on it but with us going away and then me getting sick and I was like don't knit on everything when you're sick. Don't put your germs on everything. Just knit the one thing and that's it. Hence my rain -a shawl being almost finished in a week because I was like, well, just keep knitting on this. Just knit the one thing. So, anyway, um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. Uh, so we have the knit along is going to start in November. Honestly, you could start it now because whips count. So if you want to cast on your Canuck sucks, go for it. Uh, that'll close December 1st. So you'll have all the way through November and then I'll close it on the first day of December. So you still have that extra day to post your pictures and check out the shop for the new bags and uh, do enter the knit along because you'll be entered into uh, the random giveaway for a sock size bag from my shop and you know as always subscribe and oh yes join the Ravelry group I should have mentioned that earlier. You'll have to be a member of the group to win. So join the Ravelry group. It's where I post show notes and knit alongs and giveaways and all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys um, really soon. Not in three weeks, sooner than three weeks. All right. Um, 